Hello, Simon Boswell. Tell people what the documentary Triple the Dark Fantastic is about. Well, um, it started life as a live concert film. And this was just towards the end of COVID, you know, and we <laughs> we planned it like almost a year in advance, thinking COVID's bound to be over by December 2021, you know. <laughs> yeah. well, it's and in fact, it was going to be a kind of double header concert with the Italian band Goblin. Ooh. And so, and in fact, Claudio Simonetti and I hadn't really seen or spoken to each other since we both worked together on Phenomena in 1985. So that's <laughs> quite, a long time, quite a long time ago. But anyway, um, as it happened, we made arrangements for this concert and a week before it happened, Claudio got COVID. Ooh. And so they had to cancel their whole tour, you know, so including this gig in London. So uh, we decided, what are we going to do? We'll go ahead with it anyway. We'll film it and, you know, see what we got. And so that's how it began. So we filmed the concert in which I had a kind of expanded band of 12, 13 musicians, you know, including st strings and then, you know, brass players and flute players and all kinds of different players and, and traditional kind of rock band core to it, which is what I prefer to do. But um, so... We expanded it when we saw the footage because it looked really good and we decided to make it more about my career, a little bit more historical, doing interviews with me. And then we thought, or well, certainly the director, L.G. White, yeah. Lola, as she's known to me, who is my wife, and, oh. is also, <laughs> and is also the vocalist in the band. She's an amazing singer too. So uh, she's an artist principally, like a painting type artist but um she decided look i need to get hold of all these directors and people that you've worked with and interview them as well so we kind of expanded the whole concept anyway i had already filmed dario argento um jodorowsky richard stanley you know uh, as part of my live show quite a few years before actually i i kind of made them virtual members of the band so that they appear behind us saying very weird strange lines in time with the music so um but we did new interviews with all of them and then other people Michele Suave, Lambetto Bava you know all of the Italian crew that I'd, that I'd worked with in the 80s and then some of the newer people like Richard Stanley, Nick Willing who's a really good English director um and various other people who all pop up in it so that's what the film is. Um, Tripping the Dark Fantastic really is describing, as I say at one point in the film, it's like the kind of uh, dance that I was doing around the periphery of the Italian horror industry in the 1980s. Uh, tripping, tripping the Dark Fantastic, sort of. Tripping the Light Fantastic, I don't know if you know this, is, is a, was a dance traditionally, I think like a Victorian dance called the Light Fantastic. Um, so, but I... Uh, Obviously, with the material in most of the films that I've scored like that, Dark Fantastic sounded much better. <laughs> it's a cool title. I was wondering what it meant, so, so thank you for that. How's Alejandro Jodorowsky doing? He's uh, an older gentleman now, I guess. He is. I think he's, you know, he's still very lively, though. I, know he's, I haven't seen him for a bit, for, for, for a couple of years, but... He's still going and he's still keeping himself interested and busying himself, you know, but he's well into his 90s now. And I think, uh, you know, he, he, I think he's slowing up and, and, you know, but he's still got a very sharp mind. Yeah. And yeah. so you said the director is your wife. Um, tell, tell people a little bit more about your wife. Okay, well, she's um, she's Dutch originally. She oh. she comes from Holland, um, and I met her literally in the in the area where I live, you know, in the local pub, and uh, um, was introduced to her. And she's she's a contemporary fine artist, you know, actually doing amazing sort of paintings, all kinds of different in oils and pencil drawings. But she she's very up on the technology, so. When we had shot this film, you know, she 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 has already mastered, you know, all of the the kind of uh, paint, the, the sort of Adobe technology, Photoshop, and yeah. uh, you know, and animation stuff, which she can do as well, um, and really taught herself the editing 
pretty quickly on the on premiere. So you know, we decided we we should let her do it, and she sort of knows more about my career and the way that I work than anyone else, really. So it's worked out really well. We're literally just finishing it, and in the next day or two, so it's going to be ready to go this Ooh. year. And yeah. is it going to play at some film festivals? Absolutely, yeah. Well, we're talking to various people at the moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can't give you any definitives yet. Of course, because of course. We, but definitely yeah. we will. And I think we'll probably aim to release it, you know, in, in November this year. So oh, okay. we can do all the festivals, you know, the Halloween and Day of the Dead type festivals leading up to it. Very nice. Very cool. Um, and, and Dario Argento, what was the last time you saw him before the interview? Um, I guess. Uh, well, uh, the last time I saw him was probably, let me think, was probably in London when he was at Fright Fest, probably two or yeah. three years ago. Uh, okay. Fright Fest is the big kind of horror festival. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was yeah. there with dark glasses, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. And I took him out, I think, took him out for a Japanese meal. We went and had a Japanese food. And, you know, he's still he's still going as well. Yeah. Yeah, Dark Classes was fun. That was a cool movie. Yeah. Yeah. Would you score another Dario Argento movie? I, I don't. I don't. I, I Somehow I doubt it, I think, because I think he's also very wedded to to Claudio Simonetti, you know, and, and the, the goblin history that he has with those guys. So I would think it's unlikely. I, I would certainly would do it. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I ran into Lambetto Barber just last October at nice. the Film Festival in Spain. Yeah. And I hadn't seen Lambetto since the end of the 80s. You know, I did mm. 11 films with Lambetto Barber. Jeez. It's incredible, yeah. yeah, and that was quite emotional. There was they were screening one of the films, almost the last one that I had scored, which is a remake of his father Mario Barber's film, The Mask of the Demon. Um, and so I I showed up at this screening, and he was really surprised. You know, uh -huh. so was, that was really nice to see him, and we hung out for a couple of days. And that was good. So, would you say you are a rock star who just happens to score movies? <laughs> I know so it's me that says that, but other people seem to <laughs> seem to have that opinion. I mean, it's because I suppose I mean I was classically trained on the piano from the age of five, but um as soon as I saw Jimi Hendrix on TV when I was about twelve, that was it. You know, I decided, you know, sitting down playing the piano is just not as sexy as right. throwing your guitar around on stage and and making make much more of a racket, you know. So, you know, I was in bands and um, subsequently then record producers, still am doing that actually as well. But I'm, I have more of more than one foot in the rock world. Let's put it that way. Nice. I have a question, actually. I really enjoy uh, your score to Stage Fright. Okay. And yeah. Who's playing the saxophone in that opening track? Uh, that, you know, you know what's interesting about that? That is the only piece of music in that film which is not by me. Oh, okay. That, that is not by me. I need to clear that up. Everything else in, in the film is. That, that track is actually by um, an Italian composer that, who I've become very friendly with, who had scored some Fulci films. I think he did the second or third zombie uh, movie with Fulci. Um, but I I ran into him. Is that just, Al Festa? Sorry, Al it's Festa. Stefan, no, he's called Stefano Mainetti. Okay, okay, okay. You can look him up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and you know, I'd run into him across the years. You know, from just being in Rome such a lot, from working on Italian films, and also that I was producing Italian pop and rock stars as well. I spent quite a lot of time there doing that. But Stefano has become a good friend, you know, and he wrote that that opening, that sort of piece which sets up the performance that the cast are doing, you know, that's what you mean. Uh, yeah, people think that's mine, but it's not. It's not. Oh, well, now we know. It's now been cleared know. up. Yeah. So yeah. did you have fun at the Cannes Film Festival? Well, we had fantastic time at the Cannes yeah. Film Festival, especially as there is now this um, uh, fantastic pavilion, yeah. which is there, which is run by very good friends of mine um, from Mexico, 
who who are the people behind Morbido Festival and Morbido TV station and Morbido Radio. Even I'm sorry, they've got loads of Morbido. Um, yeah. It's one of the most fun kind of horror genre festivals you can go to in Mexico City. It's really, really good fun. And so Pablo, who runs Morbido, took over and created this fantastic pavilion specifically for genre film you know makers and film lovers which is great because it feels like one has a one's own like niche in can because the can film festival can be pretty crazy so i'm sure you know it's you know there's a there's the whole lot centered around you know the 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 red carpet screenings and mm-hmm. all the american stars that come in but as apart from that it's a huge film market with people buying and selling movies from all around the world and it's nice just to have this place where you can go and relax actually now and meet everyone else from from genre the world of genre you know so yeah that's that's, it was a good time we had there and you were gifted a key to the pavilion what was that moment like i was uh i was indeed well I, i knew that something was up but I wasn't told that I, my wife was not allowed to tell me. Okay. Right? All, I, all I was told was that, that I had to, like, you know, wear a nice shirt. Right, with, right, right, right. You know, wear a nice yeah. shirt and be, be, you know, uh, be prepared for um, to look a bit more respectable than normal. And um, it was given to me. I suppose the, the, they give a, a key. They've only done. They only started this last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, where it's awarded to the Spanish director, Alex de la Iglesia, who I've worked Ooh. with on the film Perdita Durango. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. nice. So, yeah. so this year it was given to me um, and also to David Cronenberg as well. That's good company. It's good company. It's yeah. good. And uh, <laughs> as, as I joked at the time, I think I said, um, I've, always, um, I've always wanted to have the key or the code to the executive toilets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've ever worked in an office, to be honest with you. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it was it, it it surpassed my expectations to have the golden key to the fantastic pavilion. I'm not sure what it means, but it seems <laughs> like a great honor. <laughs> it's just kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what do you mostly listen to? Are you listening to other film scores? Are you listening to Jimi Hendrix? What are you listening to mostly for inspiration? Or just well, you know, in general? This is a really tricky one. Um, I famously kind of um, don't listen to very much music, especially you wow. know, if I'm doing it all day. Right. It's about the last thing that I want to do. I'd rather sit down and watch The Simpsons or something. You know, yeah, yeah. But, um, what do I listen to? Well, I've been working quite closely with my son, my youngest son. I have two sons, and the youngest is now 20 years old. And he's a real budding you know, singer-songwriter, and, and studio engineer and everything. So uh, he and I hang out in my studio here at home a lot. And I've been helping him with his first album, which he's, oh. he's uh, been working on for the last year, 18 months since he left school. And um, so I guess I've been listening to that a lot more than other things. But my wife, Lola, does listen to a lot of music. So I get to hear mm. music, you know. And that's pretty much what I've done all my life, is that people will play me things. I'd rather do that mm-hmm. and hear things people will go, oh, you should listen to this, you know. Because I, I, I don't really, I don't seek it out. Let me put it that way, at the end of a working day or working night or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Nights very often. But um, <laughs> uh, doesn't mean that I don't like various things, you know. It's hard mm-hmm. to put my finger on the things that I like right this minute, though. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I want to say what your what I think is your favorite score. Uh, okay. What would your best score? Yeah, my favorite score of yours. And let's see if you agree. I'm saying Santa Sangra. Yeah, a lot of people seem to like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of that might be to do with the fact that the film is just so kind of iconic now. I mean, it's 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 a classic. Yeah, it's a classic, and yeah. it's. As I never tire of saying, it's the closest to being a work of art, in my opinion, than it is a film of any of the films that I've done. So right. it's, it is quite extraordinary to, to watch. And I'm happy with what I did in the film, mainly. I, 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 I was, I, some things that I say uh, in Tripping the Dark Fantastic, the documentary film, about that, which I'll uh, repeat to you, which is that, what I like about it now is that some of the some of the music 
I had been trying with synthesizers to make it sound like an orchestra. Mm -hmm. And actually listening to it now, 30 plus years since, um, I like the fact that it doesn't sound anything like an orchestra, <laughs> that it's very synthetic, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's playing sort of some orchestrally type stuff, but it's very synthetic in the same way that Clockwork, I mean, it's not in the same way, but Clockwork Orange, for example, is mm -hmm. brilliant because it's classical music played on extremely electronic sounding, you know, uh, instruments. So I'm kind of pleased that it's worked out like that because it makes it even more surreal. And it works in the film in that way to have surreal synthesizer -y sequence stuff um, going on around, you know, the sort of Mexican folklore, you know, and the, and the sort of, you know, folk traditions of Mexico and the city. You, you, the whole thing is shot in Mexico City. And uh, I think that it works well, along with some Spanish Mexican sounding music, which I wrote as well with it. But I'm pleased with what I did. But you can never, I think, Individually, you can never say what is your best stuff. Other people kind of make that decision for you. Fair enough. Simon, thanks for your time. I, I really enjoyed interviewing you the last time, and uh, it's, it's been a real treat to talk to you again. What yeah, are your plans you, for the summer? Uh, well, we are sort of preparing for the release of Tripping the Dark Fantastic, I guess. Yeah. There's still a lot of legwork to do on that. Um <laughs> in terms of doing deals with people. We're pretty sure we've got the US release sorted, but um, I'm not gonna say anything about that just because you never know. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah but um, we're gonna be doing that in the summer. There are various films coming away. I've just been approached about doing a, a kind of comedy drama, which is shooting during the summer, um, which is directed and written by a friend of mine that I've known for many years. Um, and I, the previous film I had done that he that he wrote or adapted is, is Blythe Spirits, which is like um, based on a Noel Coward play. Oh, cool! It's yeah, got a very traditional British comedy, period British comedy with Judy Dench and all kinds of um, oh, wow. you know English actors in it. Uh, but it's his new film, so I'm I'm probably going to be doing that about end of the summer, I guess. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for your time. You're very welcome and stay in touch. Absolutely.